So we are in this series looking at calling stories, um, I think in the Old Testament. That's where we started, but we might dip into the New Testament. We'll see how it goes. But looking at what it means for God to have a calling for us and what it means for us to be called and to follow that calling. So you've heard about Moses calling and Abraham's calling, and this morning we're going to look at the calling of the prophet Jeremiah, one of the lesser known maybe calling stories, but a good one, I think. And it has a lot to say to us today. Um, so if you have a Bible with you or can find one in the chairs around you, um, turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll start in verse 4. Jeremiah 1, verse 4. This is Jeremiah writing himself. He says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I don't know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Don't be afraid of them, for I'm with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for these words from Jeremiah, and we ask that you teach us from them more about who you are as our God and who we are as your people. And let us leave this place a little bit different than the way we came. In your name we pray. Amen. What I love about calling stories and what gets me kind of excited about the series is that they're all about God. Well, okay, if I'm honest, I love that and I kind of hate that because it would be nice if life was all about me. But these calling stories are all about God and what God has for us. And I think that's captured really well in what God says to Jeremiah when Jeremiah is first called. God made us as his children. He created us. He knows us from before we were even born. And he set us apart and gave us a calling and a purpose for our lives and in his world. That's what our callings are about. God knows us and made us to do something for his purposes. And that's what God says to Jeremiah when he calls him. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. God knew and loved Jeremiah deeply long before Jeremiah was even Jeremiah. Isn't that incredible? Our God created us and loves us, and he does that so deeply that he gives us a purpose so we can partner with him in his mission. So in knowing Jeremiah, God says, I've appointed you to be a prophet. From long before you were even a zygote in the womb, I appointed you to be a prophet. There's such this beautiful, sweeping statement from God from the very beginning, from even before the very beginning, this is your purpose for me, Jeremiah. And then Jeremiah responds in a way that's so familiar to me. I don't know about you, but he responds with a bunch of excuses. He says, don't ask me to do that. I can't speak. I'm too young. Being a prophet is an old man's game. Give me some time to get some experience, have some jobs under my belt, and then I'll go. Don't ask me to do this now. And he comes to God with excuses. He says, okay, you may not know me quite as well as you think you do, God. I don't know how to speak. You got the wrong guy. This isn't my calling. I can't do that. But I love God's response then to Jeremiah's response. And he kind of says, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> you can give me all the excuses you want. I don't care. This is why I've created you. And I'll give you the words to speak, and I will be with you. You don't have to be afraid. But go and do it. Trust me and do it. God doesn't want to hear Jeremiah's excuses. He wants him to listen and to follow. I, I have to admit, I can relate to Jeremiah in this instance. I'm a young pastor. Um, I might be one of the youngest people in the room today, actually. <laughs> um, and I have, I've had lots of moments where God tells me to do something or I'm asked to do something in the church or for our denomination, and I think, I'm, I'm too little. I can't do that yet. Let me get some, a few more years under my belt, and then, then I'll do it. I remember there was... Um, so in our denomination, there's something called a classis, which is basically a regional body. All the churches in the Christian Reformed Church in the Pacific Northwest get together every once in a while. And there was a really difficult situation with a woman in her church 
uh, between her and her pastor, not our church, a different one far, far away. Um, <laughs> and I was asked to, to go to her house and to sit with her and hear her story and to try and give a little counseling, try and find some ways to find God in this difficult situation because her pastor couldn't in that point. There was too much tension there. And my first thought was, I'm too young. I had just been ordained maybe two months before this. <laughs> I, I only had a few years of experience under my belt here at Harvard Church, and I thought, there's so many other people who have been pastors for 25, 30, 35 years. Why shouldn't they do it? But they wanted me. And it turned out that this woman and I connected really well, and we, we shared a lot of tears and a lot of coffee and maybe a little bit of wine in that conversation. <laughs> And we had, we had a great conversation, and I think we, we both found some healing. And I think that's what God had for me to do that day, even though I felt like I was too young. I relate to Jeremiah's excuses here. But then there are so many other excuses that I can come up with not to follow God's calling. I don't know about you, but I can come up with a whole list of reasons why I can't do what God is asking me to do. Sometimes when God comes calling, I'm, I'm just too busy. There's too much going on, and I can't take the time to follow God's call. Or now that I have a seven-month-old and I'm perpetually sleep-deprived, I can often fall back on, I'm too tired. I had maybe five minutes of sleep last night. I can't go and do anything. Just let me sit here with my coffee. <laughs> I have all these excuses I can go to. Sometimes it's, it's just too intimidating, or it's too awkward, or it's too far away, or it's too close to home, or I don't like the people involved, or... I'd rather be with these people over here, or somebody, maybe this person offended me. There are all of these excuses I can come up with not to follow God's call. But you know what? Just as God said to Jeremiah, God formed me. He knew me before I was born, and he has called me and set me apart. And the same is true with each one of you this morning. I'm not going to say that you can come up with all kinds of excuses, because that's up to you, but God calls you and he's formed you. We can come up with list after list of excuses why we can't follow God's call. But this is why we were born, to follow God's call in our lives. No excuses. We need to put away all those excuses and do what God has for us in our marriages, in our relationships, in our neighborhoods, in our church, in Seattle. Because God is the one who prepared us from before we were born, who created us and set us apart for each specific task that he calls us to. And he's the one who empowers us and goes with us as we go and follow him. So why would we come up with all these excuses? God doesn't want our excuses. He wants our lives. He doesn't want our excuses. He wants our lives. And he's not making a request when he calls. I remember once I was volunteering in our preschool downstairs during the week, and I was having a really hard time with two little boys who just would not listen to me. It was time to pick up the toys, and they were playing with their blocks and cards and getting kind of rowdy, and I kept trying to get them to clean up so we could go on to what was next, and they just wouldn't listen. And I realized I was saying, hey, guys, can you pick up your toys now, please? And those of you who spend time around kids know my mistake already, probably. I was making it a request. I needed to say, hey, it's time to put away the toys. We're going to move on. And then they would listen. But I said, I asked it as a question and made it easy for them to say, no, I'm busy. I don't want to right now. <laughs> and so they kept on playing with their cars. That's not what God is doing to us when he calls us. He's not saying, hey, you know, you might, maybe would you want to think about doing this thing with these people? Or it might be a good idea if you want to reach out to your neighborhood or those kinds of, he's not making a request. He's saying, go and do it. No excuses. This is why I created you. This is why you're here. Follow me and do it. That's what God says to Jeremiah. That's what God says to us this morning. God didn't go to Jeremiah and say, hey, you might want to think about maybe being a prophet. What do you think? Does that sound like a good idea? No. He says, this is why I created you. Go and do it. And when Jeremiah gives excuses, he says, I don't care. I told you to do it. Do it. Period. Full stop. End of story. I know it sounds harsh, but I think God says that to each of us this morning. 
We all have a calling and a purpose individually, and together as a church, we have a calling and a purpose. And it's so easy to say, I'm too busy, or I'm too young, or I'm too old, or I'm too close to retirement, or I'm not close enough to retirement, or it's too much money, or too far away, or excuse after excuse after excuse. And God says, I don't care. I called you. Follow me. Trust me. I'm with you. Just do it. Furthermore, here we are as God's people together, as God's church with a capital C here at Harbor Church this morning. And God has a calling for us together that we share. We each have our individual callings, but we have one together as well. And Jesus lays it out in Matthew 28. Familiar passage. I'm sure you've heard it before. It's the Great Commission. When Jesus says, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the names of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. That's why we exist as a church. This is why God created the church, so we can go, and so as we are going, we can make disciples and baptize them and teach them to obey all that God has commanded us. We're not called to sit and wait for people to come to us. We're not called to watch the doors on Sunday and hope that people walk in so we can welcome them. We are called to go and to make disciples. No excuses. And there's a little bit of grace in all of this. We may be tired. We may be burned out. All of our excuses may be true, but we have this piece of grace that God gives us in our calling that he is with us. Jesus said it to his disciples, Surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God said it to Jeremiah in his calling, Don't be afraid. I will be with you. I'll give you the words to say, and I will rescue you. When we go, when we step out and let go of our excuses, God is with us. He empowers us to go, and he gives us the words to say, and the right things to do, and the right places to go, if we can just stop making excuses and do it and trust him. That's what we're called to do. I think that's why God doesn't want to hear our excuses, because he knows the promise he made to us, and he knows he's a God that keeps his promises, and so he'll be with us like he says he will. So I think he has very little patience when we make excuses, like I know I tend to do when God calls me. When we live out our purposes as individual disciples and as God's church, God's body together, God is with us and he gives us the courage to do it every step of the way. So why should we hold on to all of our excuses? God doesn't want to hear them. Why should we hold on so tightly to them? A couple weeks ago, Chris asked us, one of the questions that God asked Moses, what's that in your hand? And he asked us to write it down and put it in the offering and offer it up to God that mo- this morning. So I'm going to take a little page of his book and twist it this morning. There are papers on your chairs and markers or pens or some kind of writing utensil, mostly stolen from the kids' room. Thanks, kids. But this morning, I, want, I invite you to um, be honest with yourself. What is your excuse this morning? What are things are you saying to God, oh, I can't do whatever it is you're asking me to do. I'm too tired or I'm too busy. What are your excuses? And I invite you to write them down. I'll do it too. I'm not exempt from this. And we're going to throw them in the trash. (laughs) I think scripture says that's where they belong. So I invite you to be honest and think about what your excuse might be. Maybe you have a go-to one that comes up often. I know I sure do. Maybe there's something that's been stopping you this past week or the last couple of days or even just this morning. Write it down. And then during the last song, as we sing a a great song of dedication, I invite you to come up and crumple it up and throw it in the trash. You can walk away, and that excuse is gone. And I pray that we can all leave here freed a little bit to do God's calling. So I want to invite the worship team back up for our closing song, and we'll pray after we're all finished.
excuses. I invite you this morning to leave them here. Don't come back and find them and put it back in your pocket. Don't do that in your actual pockets or in your hearts. <laughs> leave them here and go and follow God's call. No excuses. Trust him because he's the one who empowers you and gives you the call to do it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the one who calls us that you are the great and powerful God who knows us and loves us, who created us and formed us even before we were in the womb. And that in that loving us and knowing us, you give us a calling, both individually and together here at Harbor Church. And we pray you will give us the boldness to follow it. No more excuses. Take away our excuses. Help us to leave those excuses in the trash this morning and go out ready to proclaim your gospel, to go and make disciples. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.